Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video we're going to talk about the number one most important rhythm for playing blues guitar. Now if you want to play blues guitar, this is a rhythm that you're going to see in countless songs, and it's not only important to understand how it works and how to practice it, but also just to develop this overall feel that is a huge part of playing blues guitar. Now we're going to break down this rhythm in today's video, go back to some basics, and then I'm going to give you some things that you can practice as well as what to listen for and how to develop this in your playing. But before we jump in, I want to hook you up with something right away. If you're new here and have not downloaded my fretboard guide at the first link down below, you're going to want to grab this right away. And this is basically an ultimate fretboard guide. It's going to show you the five chords and scales that I use for mapping out the fretboard and I put it all on one page so it's just a single page that you can download keep on your music stand or on your desktop as you're putting all of this together so grab your copy completely for free just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or use the first link down below all right let's dive into this lesson let's learn the number one most important rhythm for blues guitar and that is knowing the difference between straight and swing feel. So we're going to play just a simple chord. We're going to play an A5 for this exercise. We're going to play the open A string and then the second fret on the fourth string. Just those two notes. And it's going to sound like this once we get it swinging. Two, three, four. So I'm playing just those two notes. Now these would be written in sheet music as eighth notes, but it would say to interpret them or play them with a swing feel. So typically eighth notes are counted. We're splitting up one beat into two parts. So we'll say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But what I want you to do is think about a triplet. So a triplet is three to one beat. Okay, so you can count those like this. One and a two and a three and a four and a. So I'm saying one and a. So I've got three syllables basically. And you could say any three syllable word. You could say strawberry, strawberry, blueberry, blueberry, whatever works for you. So what you're gonna do with swing is it's very similar to playing on the first beat, the one, and then the uh, so the one and uh, so one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. Okay, and that's gonna get you closer to a swing feel. So you understand the triplet, and then just see if you can count this. We're gonna say one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and the three and the four and the. So you're playing on the first and then that third part of the triplet. Now rhythmically though, we would typically just count them one and two and three and four and. So one's a little a little longer, a little heavier than the other. One and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the. Or one and two and three. Now if I played those eighth notes straight, it would sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two. Here's swinging. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'm just doing all downs there. Now another way that you can work on this is you want to make sure you're counting. You can also accent the second eighth note. So one and two and three. And four, and, and that can help you get the feel. Or you could also think long, short, long, short, like long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. From there, you'll be able to start listening to songs and identifying a swing feel versus a straight feel. And a great example of this would be like Stevie Ray Vaughan's Pride and Joy, that classic Texas shuffle where he plays. It 
delicious one and two and three and four and being able to get that swing. It's really just back and forth. It's so simple, but it's actually really hard to develop. You want to be able to, you know, really swing it and give it the right feel. So as some extra homework, go and listen to some recordings and see if you can identify if a song is played with a swing or a shuffle feel or if the feel is more of a straighter feel, like a rock feel or maybe a Latin feel. Now this doesn't have to be just blues music. You know, you have jazz, of course, that has a lot of swing. You could have a pop tune that swings, and it's just being able to identify this rhythm. But again, this is super common in a lot of blues music. Now, one of the ways that I really developed this was through playing with great drummers. So if you have the opportunity to play with a drummer, that's a great way to work on this. You can also just play along with recordings. I mean, listen to that Steve Ray Vaughan feel and how hard he swings and just try and play along and get that feel. You know, I watch videos of him where his hand is just, you know, going in this shuffle motion. And so try and copy that and over time you'll get better at it. And to help you even more, make sure to pick up my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is going to show you the five must know chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And I want to give it to you completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or use the first link down below. Next, before you go, leave a comment and let me know your number one struggle with guitar. Just comment it down below so I can make some future videos here on the channel helping you out. As always, thanks for the support and we'll see you in another video real soon.